Hey everybody, welcome to another Good E-Reader review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Kobo Arc 7 and we're going to show you the hardware as well as all the software to give you a sense on whether or not this tablet is for you. It's in running Android 4.2.2, so a fairly modern iteration. It's a 7-inch tablet. The resolution is 1024 by 600. It's powered by a quad-core 1.2 gigahertz processor in conjunction with 1 gig of RAM. It has 8 gigs of storage total, and it has Wi-Fi, expandable memory. One of the downsides is the 0.3 megapixel front-facing camera. It's not going to win any awards, but you do get around 10 hours of battery life. Peter, show us what this is all about. Nothing special on the front. Very plain looking. Everything gets interesting on the back with these really cool angles. You can see here it's very chiseled. It's very nice. I'm not a fan of the plastic used on this. The plastic used on the... Um, there's a similar artistic inspiration from Kobo using the um, kind of quilted. argyle quilted back. The the plastic on here looks very similar to the Kobo Aura HD e-reader. It, it leaves a lot of fingerprints and shows a lot of stuff, whereas the Kobo Aura 6-inch um, has the same plastic as this one, which is the 7 HD by Kobo, and it's textured, so you actually get a lot more grip. I find texture backs, yeah, they, they provide more grip, whereas these ones that don't have any grip... For one, it, they get dirty way yeah. quicker because there's like no little grooves to like, you know, hang on to. And so you can expect that if you have this tablet, I mean, we just cleaned this literally like 10 seconds ago and look at all the fingerprints already. Right. Speakers on the bottom left corner, volume control, power button. We have the SD card port here, expandable up to 32 gigs. Micro HDMI, micro USB, a microphone, and a 3.5 mil headphone jack. The inclusion of a micro HDMI, I think, is a good move because none of Kobo's previous tablets before this next generation line actually had them. So this allows you to be able, be able to stream video content to your television, Pico projector, and whatnot. So let's take a look at the software experience. Okay, so we're looking at the main home screen here, and uh, you could add live wallpapers, static wallpapers, but the selection is different from the Kobo Arc 7 HD to the normal version. So I found that odd, but you can see that there's a little camera widget there and a picture of myself by default. The picture frame is blank, but you can click on here and it'll activate the front facing webcam for you to take a picture of yourself and personalize your tablet a little bit more. I think this is a nice little touch and they've kind of done this across the entire line of the new generation Kobo tablets. What you do is swipe here and it's a very heavily skinned version of Android. You see some of the pocket articles we have, uh, new books that we've added, new books that we've purchased as well as some sample books. So we've downloaded the sample and there's like a price tag here. So you can kind of click on that, make purchasing decisions. Readers have also bought, etc. Seems to be some loading problems there. But you can also click here for new releases and make immediate buying decisions. And it's all fairly popular books. Now, the one kind of cool thing is within the Kobo Android app, they actually have their own rating and review system built into it. Now, it's a different rating review system found in their Android tablets than there is on their online website and their dedicated e-reader devices. So you can kind of get a sense of other similar titles and things like that. Let's kind of click here. Sort of the same thing. All right. So... This page is sort of like a compilation of like ebook discovery and sort of titles you purchase. You can see it's really colorful and I kind of really dig that. If we click on a book that we already own, we can kind of get a sense of uh, immediate reading and you can kind of click here and get a lot of settings to configure it. You press on the text, you can change all the text uh, sizes, fonts, one page spread, two page spread. You also have the ability to long press. This opens up dictionary definitions, share to Facebook, Google, Wikipedia. You can make different colored highlights. You can make notes, standard keyboard experience, but you can sideload in new keyboards because this is running Android. 
You can also box large amounts of text and you can share in Wikipedia and all that kind of stuff as well. Ta uh, tap on the top right corner to make a bookmark and you can change the page turns to either swipe, curl, um, animated page turn in the settings options. Okay, now what Kobo has done is eliminated Pulse and they have incorporated some elements of Kobo Pulse into Beyond the Book. Uh, Beyond the Book, you can see here that we have some book stats, some public notes, times finished, uh, but the whole thing is a little bit buggy. Uh, you would figure you can click on these, but you actually can't. It says no key terms have been established. Not all books are buggy like this, but considering this is The Racketeer by John Grisham, it's been a New York Times bestseller list for uh, a month or two at least, and it doesn't really have any public notes or anything left. So that's kind of like one of the little uh, things that have irked me on this. You can change the, the page transitions if you want. We have it on none, but you can kind of get animated page turns. Share activity to timeline. You can even turn off Beyond the Book if you want. So it's a it's a pretty simplified reading experience. The one thing that I really like and I find that's most compelling about this device is the collection management. Most e-readers and tablets have a collection management system where you could highlight a book, add it to a custom bookshelf, and that's it. With this, you can actually put YouTube videos in it if you want. We only have one, but you can add as many as you want. You can create custom shelves for ebooks. They have a getting started folder here, which basically teaches you how to add YouTube videos, how to add pocket articles. So once you have one shelf full of a lot of content, this is basically what it's going to look like. So I think this looks very nice. They also have a dedicated pocket shelf. And what we've done is you could log into pocket or create a new account on this tablet. And then you could start adding websites articles. And this will allow you to read the articles offline which I find is good because it's only a Wi-Fi tablet. It doesn't have like 3G or LTE or anything like that. So being able to read, especially your favorite websites like goodyreader.com, uh, you'll be able to do that here. They do have a magazine tab, but uh, the magazine section is not uh, developed yet. You click here, you kind of just get some placeholder art. You can go uh, directly to the Kobo store. So this is where you would make uh, the bulk of your uh, buying purchases and ebook discoveries. Now, the one thing that I don't like about their store is the fact that where are the categories? This is like the main home screen, but as you can see that there's really no categories unless you click ebooks. Which you'd figure that this is an ebook store. You'd figure that this would be like on the front page. But again, where are the categories? It seems to be hit or miss to actually try to find them. There we go. Now, what I've noticed is this categories will sometimes appear here and then sometimes it'll appear horizontally. Uh, we've noticed that it appears in different ways. <laughs> and so it's this is sort of like one of the things that I don't like is that the categories page isn't on the main page. You have to click, you have to go to the store and then click ebooks again just to find it. And it's presented differently each time that you do it. But it's a way that once you find it, you can get graphic novels, comics, um, and you could sort of search for whatever kind of content that you want. Okay, one of the new elements that Kobo has introduced uh, with their tablet is uh, what's known as reading mode. And uh, reading mode will allow you to eliminate all of the distractions found on a tablet. It'll turn off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, it'll turn off notifications and prompts, Facebook status updates and all that jazz 
And why they basically did that is to help with immersion reading. One of the big pitfalls of reading on a tablet is nonstop bombardment of notifications. New email, your, your people have visited your Springfield and Simpsons tapped out, uh, your gold is ready in Clash of Clans. And it really sort of detracts from the overall reading experience. And so Koba's made reading mode in order to combat this. So once we turn it off, everything's sort of like reinitialized. But what, what I kind of noticed is once you turn that off, you actually have to manually turn on Wi-Fi again. It doesn't automatically turn on. Okay, so this is basically the tablet. Uh, it does a lot of stuff. The, one of the last things that we want to do is run uh, a video test, and this will give you a sense on how like the audio and, and video performs. Mm, that's unfortunate. My lady. Whoa, whoa. Huh, this is awkward. Not you're awkward, but just because we're I'm awkward. You're gorgeous. Wait, what? Hi everyone. I'm Olaf. Ah! Hi. You're creepy. Want it? Whoa, whoa. No. All right, we got off to a bad start. I know how to stop this winter. Yeah. Hang on. I like fast. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get your feet down. This is fresh lacquer. Seriously, were you raising a barn? So we saw the video and audio test, and I actually think that the audio sounds better on the Kobo Arc 7 than it did the Kobo Arc 7 HD. Yeah, it was a little bit louder, and um, I mean, they're both located on the back, so it's not like either of them have a particularly better setup but okay. it was a little bit crisper. If you want to add any content to your shelves, you got to load up the stock browser and you can see here that there's a little sort of three boxes there. You kind of click on that, which is actually hard. The It's because all these are so close together. You find yourself misclicking, but you can add any type of content to your shelves. So you can add anything web page wise as well as video wise through this way. Uh, final thoughts. Um, it's a it's a pretty economic tablet to get. It doesn't really cost a lot of money. It's what like one hundred thirty nine dollars. It's anywhere from one hundred twenty to one hundred sixty, depending on the market. But we are in Canada, and I think it's one fifty. Okay, so you get the latest version of Android, a quad core processor, one gig of RAM, and it's a tablet designed for e reading, which I think gets the job done. I think that Kobo Store is not laid out as intuitively as I would have liked, and the absence of a magazine section on launch day, I don't find was probably the best move uh, but we will check this tablet out again once the magazine section comes out but I think that if you're looking for uh, an entry level device that will get the job done I would get this if you have unlimited money to, to burn I would probably say wait for the 10 inch Kobo tablet to come out because I had my hands on that at the Kobo launch event and it was amazing in almost every single way so I would probably recommend to get this for a low entry level tablet, but don't expect it to be a replacement for say like an iPad mini or like an iPad or something like that in terms of performance and ecosystem. So for a review of the Kobo Arc 7, my name is Michael. And this is Peter. Everybody take care.